Madam Vice Chancellor, fellow faculty members, graduates, parents, and guests, it gives me great pleasure this morning to introduce today's honorary degree recipient. If you don't know anyone like this already, you'll discover a few people in your life who when they call you to ask you to do something, whether it's to work on a project, to uh, be a volunteer on a campaign, to attend an event, to speak to a group, you, when they call, you don't ask any questions, you just automatically say yes. Jody White is one of those special people. There's a saying that's variously been attributed to uh, Ronald Reagan, Harry Truman, and Ralph Waldo Emerson that goes like this. There's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Jody's lived by that philosophy throughout her career. Her quiet and highly effective yet decisive leadership skills and ability to attract talent has been a part of a career that began in journalism at the CBC in the late 1970s after graduating from University of Toronto in political science and from Carleton with an honors bachelor of a journalism degree. She moved into national politics and government in the 1980s and 1990s. Four years she spent as chief of staff to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and, that, and then culminating her government involvement as chief of staff to Prime Minister Kim Campbell. She then shifted to the corporate world where she served as vice president of corporate affairs for Amasco in Montreal through much of the 1990s and followed that in the 2000s with five years as president of the Public Policy Forum in Ottawa and a continuing role as a consultant. Throughout her career, she's also devoted her time and skills to serving on boards and in and other capacities across a broad range of organizations in the not-for-profit and voluntary sectors. They include the National Theatre School, the Canadian International Council, the Trans-Canada Trail, Stratford Festival, the Institute for Research on Public Policy, Tides Canada, Action Canada, the Ottawa General Hospital, and the, and the Canadian Journalism Foundation. She's also been a senior distinguished fellow at Carleton's Norman Patterson School of International Affairs and Arthur Kruger College of Public Affairs. In 2013, she became a member of the Order of Canada, cited for her philanthropic work and contributions to public dialogue. If I could be allowed a brief digression here directed at some of our graduates this morning, it just goes to show you, what you where you can go and what you can achieve with a journalism degree. <laughs> but back to my first point, why do you say yes when Jody calls without even asking about what you're getting into? First, you know that it's a serious project or she wouldn't be involved. Second, you know that it will produce something of significance that's, th that's thoughtful, well-considered and valuable to the community. Third, you'll know you'll be expected to play an active role. You'll be given room to explore ideas, to try things out, to figure out what works best and most important, an opportunity to speak your mind and know that it's being heard. You'll, you know everyone involved will be treated equally, all views will be considered seriously, and the result will truly be a group effort and presented as such. Back to my point about not, uh, about not taking credit yourself and then being sure that it's a consensus uh, operation. Along the way, you'll have some fun and share some laughs too, for Jody brings a sense of humor to whatever she does. As a progressive conservative over the, over the last decade or so, she's had to call on that sense of humor on more than one occasion. By the way, saying yes to Jody also works in reverse. You may not have talked to her for months or years, but if you call her up and say you need her help with something, she doesn't hesitate to say yes. Former Quebec Premier Jean Charest tells a story about his 1993 leadership campaign that Jody, that Jody managed, where he was runner-up to Kim Campbell to replace Brian Mulroney as conservative leader, progressive conservative leader and prime minister. Mid-campaign, Mr. Charest thought he was doing pretty well, particularly because he had attracted so many young people and they were coming on board his campaign as voluntary workers. Then he realized that many of them were there because they wanted to work with Jody. They knew they'd learn a great deal, they wanted to be able to say they'd work with her, and they also knew the value of that as a calling card for whatever they wanted to do in the future. Jody White's career can be summarized as, as journalism in the 1970s, politics and government in the 1980s and early 1990s, the corporate world in the later 1990s, and then think tanks, public policy, and the not-for-profit sector over the past decade and a half. During almost all of that time, there was no talk of gender equality. Those were worlds that were dominated by men. 
Time and again, she beat them in at their own game in government, politics, and public policy, demonstrating in all those fields a deep understanding and appreciation of the country and a, dedicated, and a dedication to improving the lives of everyone who lived in Canada. Madam Vice-Chancellor, in recognition of a distinguished career in journalism, public service, and volunteer leadership, I request you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws on Aris Kaza on Jody White. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Senate and the Board of Governors, I hereby bestow upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto pertaining. Congratulations, Dr. White. <laughs> Madam Vice-Chancellor, graduates and honored guests, let me be begin by expressing my very sincere thanks for this unexpected and wonderful honor. And congratulations to all of you graduates for reaching the end, or at least the end of the beginning. And first, I'm going to take a, a, a sip of water, if you don't mind. Uh, it's wonderful to be part of this very happy day for all of you. Being here today takes me back to my own graduation from this institution in 1970. A few months later, I started a job in the newsroom at Ottawa's CBC television station. As I arrived at the station on a sunny morning for my first day of work, I was greeted by members of the Canadian Forces, rifles and bayonets at the ready. It was 1970, and Canada was in the midst of the October crisis. The British Consul James Cross had been kidnapped, and so had popular Quebec Cabinet Minister Pierre Laporte. Over the course of the next few days, Prime Minister Trudeau, the first one, enacted the War Measures Act, police detained hundreds of Canadians, and Pierre Laporte was murdered. It was a remarkable initiation to the news business. The events of that October opened my eyes to the very real fragility of our country. Throughout the, that period, Canada was focused inward, obsessing about the country and our position in the world. Whither Canada was the constant question. That questioning on a national level was echoed in a personal level for me. It has been said that the best path is not a straight line. Well, if that's true, then my career path fits the bill perfectly. It zigzagged all over the place, and I think I am richer and I hope wiser for it. From journalism to politics to consulting, back to politics, government, the private sector, the nonprofit sector, and participation in seven federal election campaigns and a number of leadership races along the way. If I had had a definitive plan, a lot of that would never have happened. The dedication which, with which one sticks to an inflexible plan can be the chains which keep you from unimagined possibilities. In 1984, Joe Clark asked me to become his chief of staff at Foreign Affairs. I was busy in a consulting business. I had worked for him before. I had a young family. All good reasons to say no. But then I realized this would be the first time in our history that a former prime minister decided to serve in the cabinet of his successor. I couldn't resist. It was one of the smartest things I did. I learned a great deal and was able to participate in big issues like the Canada-US free trade deal, the Ethiopian famine, the sanctions against South Africa, arms control negotiations, the Air India terrorist attack, and many more. Years later, I was asked to join the board of a charity called Tides Canada. It's a foundation with a mission for environmental sustainability. I was busy at the time running a think tank, and I wasn't sure I was a fit for an environmental organization. But I agreed, eventually became chair of the board, and got thrown into a row with the Harper government over the role of charities in Canada and the sector's activism over climate change. The acrimony included references to us as money launderers. 
That's behind us now, and Tides Canada's reputation as an innovator in the charitable sector is stronger than ever. It was stressful, even scary, but I'm truly glad I did it. By remaining open and optimistic to new paths and new realities, you will create your own opportunities in what has become a disrupted world. That rapid disruption, which we all face, has been sweeping through industries and is clearly not going to abate. Experts say we are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution and that no one really knows where digital technology is going to take us as it advances and explores the frontiers of artificial intelligence and biotech. Music, journalism, media, telecom, legal services, hospitality, financial services, even the taxi industry, all have succumbed in one way or another. This disruption makes the future look quite perplexing and uncertain. And yet, the Wither Canada conversations are behind us. Canada is a stronger, richer, more diverse country with a deep well of self-confidence and ambition. Our writers, artists, and musicians are well known outside our borders. Canadians are working in every corner of the world, making contributions in medicine, in engineering, in global companies, in aid and development organizations. Our population is more diverse than any other in the world. Canada is truly an international country with three founding peoples, Indigenous, English, and French, facing outwards to the globe. We are rec recognized for our profound commitment to mutual accommodation. It has been a vital part of the development of this country, but it is an imperfect record, and we still have more to do. The gift of Canada includes the rocky shores of Cape Spear on the Atlantic, the glorious Haida Gwaii on the Pacific, and Ellesmere Island in the north, and all the challenges and problems in between. All countries are knit together by stories. Canada's first story started more than 400 years ago when Champlain crossed the Atlantic an astonishing 29 times as he explored, mapped, and settled our coast. Our most recent story is the remarkable nationwide response to the tragic forest fire in Fort McMurray. As the class of 2016, you have benefited from the excellence that Carlton embodies, expanding your knowledge and polishing your skills of analysis and problem solving. One lesson I've learned is that in an uncertain world, the key to success and satisfaction is to let your values be the pen that writes your story. Values like honor, duty, respect, honesty, courage, integrity, service, constancy, and kindness. They should be the foundation of everything you do. They are the most important tools in your toolkit. Cherish and tend them. Keep them as a magnetic north that guides you through the uncertain days ahead. You will be burdened by stress, setbacks, and specters of doubt. If you rely on your core principles, you will never look back with regret nor look around unsure of what to do. The story ahead of you is also the one head ahead for our country. Canada will only be as good a place as you challenge yourself to make it. To move Canada forward, progress will only come through collaboration, through dialogue, not monologue, through knowledge sharing, innovation, and silo busting. All of you here today have chosen areas of study that relate to the public service, to public service in the broadest sense, to public policy and to the public arena. For me, public policy is too important to be left to the politicians and the public servants. Success in solving problems and creating progress will only come with engagement and partnership between the private sector, government, and the charitable and nonprofit sector. The divisive wedge politics and dog whistle campaigning of the past 10 years must be put aside permanently. As Chris said, I am a progressive conservative. Ideological government turned out to be misdirected, mean-spirited, and short-sighted at its core. We paid a price for it by, pre by wasting precious time. Lasting solutions only come through collaboration and inclusion. 
through evidence-based research and through positive energy and commitment. Now is the time for you to begin to write your story. You are starting to imagine what your contribution might be. There will be success and there will be some failure. There will be happiness and no doubt some sadness. There are ch tough challenges to be met as you embark into a complex, fast-paced, disruptive economy. Business as usual is not good enough anymore. We need innovative thinking and action. You will find whatever success and happiness you want and deserve if you let your values be your North Star. Thank you and good luck.